Now let's talk about some of the, we've talked about, uh, about three of the uh, key features of ASA. Let's talk about uh, the introduction of alternative capital raising products. Is that what we just, yeah, what we just talked essentially, about? Yeah, essentially, you know, um, you know, w when this new management came in, in terms of that transformation, is based on, you know, uh, a, a particular internal target they set for themselves, which is $1 trillion by 2016. And there are certain key pillars that will drive that $1 trillion. One of it was that they were going to introduce five products in five years. Okay, so now we have, um, equities, which is plain vanilla. We have fixed income. We have started the retail bond trading. You are aware of that. And we have appointed market makers for that as well. Um, and I think Amcon just appointed its own market maker on the, on the floor. I think it's Greenwich Trust or so. Now, all of that is happening within the first three years, which is so we have uh, equity, we have fixed income. Then the ETF, you know, we've launched one ETF last year yeah, called New Gold. And we have so many in pipeline this year that we're going to launch as well. So all three have been done. The next level is to introduce derivatives. Now, the issue is, should we introduce options or features first? Um, this year, part of our deliverables is actually to do a survey to dive in one. What, what, what kind of derivatives should we introduce first? Would it be futures? Would it be options? And two, whether we should even uh, introduce both at the same time. Also aggregate or evaluate the capacity of the market for derivatives and what, what structural change can or should be done before they are launched. So but those products surely by 2014 should begin to see them. I good thing you talked about uh, capacity because I was just ask, going to ask, those are sophisticated uh, market instruments. Are we, is the market anywhere ready for that? Well, well we have to start sometime. We, I know exactly. We have to start with something. I mean, today if you look at it, there's some level of, you know, uh, derivatives trading that's been done. For example, you know, how people trade, in, uh, you know, intra-Africa with their currencies, for example. So who takes that currency? If you have a, a bank that has multiple you know, sites within Africa, how do they trade? Some kind of derivative trading is going on in terms of hedging for the currencies. It's already happening. The thing is that you bring it out and begin to put it in perspective and put the structures in place for people to be able to trade it. I agree with you, derivatives are high-end type market trading, so we don't expect everybody to be part of it. But at least let's formalize it, let's put it on the exchange, and it will help you know, increase liquidity within the market and, and grow the market as well. Are you carrying investors along? Because there's a lot, it looks like there's, you know, there's always so much happening at the same time. I, I know we, and I'm sure investors do appreciate what the, you know, authorities are doing, trying to ensure that the market is vibrant at every point in time, deepening it, providing liquidity, ensuring that there's fair play, but, you know, is everybody being carried along? Surely, what we do from time to time is, apart from, you know, the, the seminars and the investor, um, uh, what's it called, the programs that we do along the 14 sites that we have, you know, we have 14 branches outside. Uh, Lagos. So we use those branches as well to discuss our new ideas, our targets, products that we've launched, and we do it on a consistent basis along the 14 branches. As for, you know, sophisticated investors, we do one particular investor program every quarter. I think the next one is supposed to happen in May, um, where we sensitize people about what we're doing, how we're doing it, where we want to go. And in every opportunity that we go out to seminars or, or we sit on panels, we actually explain to stakeholders, this is what we're doing, this is where we want to go. And by the way, before we launch anything, we internalize it with our stakeholders before we even take it to the SEC for approval. So um, all of that is happening simultaneously. I know we are making things, uh, uh, you know, we're making uh, good, good progress, but, you know, we have to keep that momentum for the market to keep going as, as it is. Oh, interesting. Very exciting stuff. Let's just look at the one last feature of the ASM uh, board, uh, the creation of the ASM rule book. What's that going to look like what, in terms of content? Well, actually, it's an extract. The, the rule book has been in existence in terms of our green listing book, and that has been all. So what we did was that we extracted what was there, uh, relevant to the ASM, and, you know, put it in a book where we now have it on our website, and, you know, you can come to the exchange, any of the branches, and pick up that rule book. What is, it's actually listing requirements for the ASM and what you need to do and the rest of it. Uh, and, and, and we believe every day there will be improvement. We're currently over, you know, over view, rather doing a review of total rules around the exchange, uh, we have consultants working with us on it. Um, I'm sure some of the uh, work they will do will also be touching on the ASM as we go forward. Because we have to keep improving the market every day. So it's not going to be a static rule. It's going to be, you know, uh, continuous thing. Now, if I had you back two years from now to talk about the ASM board, what would you be telling me? I would have been telling you that um, I would, we would have ASM board launch within 12 months, but it took us 24 months because the market took a bit to recover. And I think maybe doing it now is probably the right time to actually do it because, you know, markets typically have a behavior when they come to recover. Uh, in our own case, foreign investors came back first, so value institutional investors are coming back, so value retail are now back, and then the next level is the IPO market, which is what we're targeting. Right? So now, talking about uh, investors, I, I saw on your website, uh, you're, not, you're not tracking the foreign portfolio investment uh, versus, you know, what, in terms of volume, how much is coming in, going out, versus yes. what the you know, domestic investors are uh, also putting into the market. Why is NSA tracking this? And of this, well, for March, I've seen a decline. It looks like 
it's more in the hands of domestic investors now. Yes, you know, um, there is a fear that you know hot money is coming to Nigeria. So people are thinking, can the market sustain this kind of uh, momentum? So you know how to give people more confidence that look, this is what money is coming to the exchange. So that tells you whether or not you by yourself the time whether it's hot money. Today we have less than 40% foreign investors coming to Nigeria, more 60. I think the domestic one is more stable. Everybody wants to see more domestic investments within the stock market because you don't see that capital flight when there's anything going on. And besides, we live in this country, we can, we are best barometers to measure what's going on in the market than anybody else. So yes, um, that's why we actually put it out there. On the and we're going to have it on a monthly basis? Absolutely. You pull it out. What's the person you pull uh, clients and foreign, invest, foreign uh, investors, their clients from the stockbrokers, and you put all the numbers Yes, together. we typically use custodians, stockbrokers, and any other uh, stakeholder that actually keeps that information okay. and aggregate it and share it with, with the market as much as possible. Go forward, we are, we are going to redesign the form that we actually ask stockbrokers to, 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 to submit to the exchange, where it will tell us an institutional investor, uh, um, uh, individual or high net worth investor, foreign investors, so that we will have a more specifically clear um, uh, data to be able to share with the market. In terms of market infraction, uh, talking about you know, on the regulatory side and the market infractions, I know you have the ex-compliance report that comes out from time to time. Would you, would you say that there's been a significant uh, decline in... The, 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 the concept or the thinking of the exchange is zero tolerance for infraction. So we do not think that once you break the law or once you break a regulation, the consequences are what will happen to you. Um, because of that zero tolerance initiative, we are seeing a very significant high level of compliance in terms of rules and regulation, both by issuers and by uh, stockbrokers. And like you say, the ex-compliance board will show you on a consistent basis who infringed, what he infringed, or what the penalty was, and who the individual broker is, if at all. And even with issuers, you know, um, we, are, we are building a framework where we ensure that the market is transparent, fair, and investors are protected, and also efficient at, at the same time, because that's also very important. Now, right, what's the relationship like between the regulatory authorities, NSC authorities, and the stockbrokers themselves, in terms of what do you meet regularly, do you, how much of collaboration do you do? We actually have a, um, a, a periodic meeting with the CEOs of stockbrokers. We have, uh, um, you know, um, trading floor meetings, which is with traders that come on a periodic basis, uh, and we have our uh, broker-dealer regulation department, which interfaces consistently with, with, with the market. And apart from that, market operations within the technology area also interface with the, you know, with the market on a daily basis. So there are significant, you know, um, um, uh, what's it called, uh, interfaces that we have. I mean, we, have, we, we talk to the CIS most of the time and all, almost all of the time, as well as Ashon. Ashon is the Association of Stockbrokers of Nigeria. So yes, we, we, we try and bring everybody into what we're doing on a daily basis as we go along. Now, uh, for, well, let's stray away from the, the ASM uh, matter now, the uh, central securities uh, clearance system. Remember where uh, companies are now beginning to have their annual general meetings. Uh, of course, there probably will be complaints about, you know, I can't find my certificates. I didn't get a, an alert for my dividend and all of that. How, in terms of how, to, how you're going to be, well, that's not your department, but, you know, part of, uh, it's all part of the NSC. Uh, the, the capacity there, would that be taken care of? Can investors be reassured that, yes, all of that will be taken care of. You know, there's a new CEO at the, well, not new anymore. Um, there's, a, there's a CEO that has just come in at the CSCS, and I think he's doing a fantastic job uh, over the period. And you can see certain things have been happening within CSCS. The kind of, you know, we're deploying a new technology called Extreme, and, and the kind of, you know, uh, uh, issues that we're, we're expecting and happening, we're seeing that interface between the new technology and what they have currently, and the ideas that they are trying to propagate in terms of how they can service both the companies and individual shareholders is incredible. Uh, and I would suggest one of these days you should invite him here to come and explain to you what exactly they He doing. has been here once or twice, but exactly. uh, now that like, I just as I situated it, it's AGM season, yes. and I've actually I get, gotten one of two people saying, you know, you know, I can't find this, that I'm being, I think I've been swindled by the company I, I, or something. I, I understand that it would be a better, there can be a better interface between registrars, CSTS, and shareholders and issuers. There can be, and I think they're working on it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, the postal system does also help matters, but I think the SEC released a circular recently saying that, um, they, that every uh, that dividend should be e-dividend compliant or something. And I think they're going to work around that and ensure that that happens. Once that happens, then you're likely to see less complaints going on. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Haruna. We're going to have to leave it there. We're almost completely out of time. All the best with the rest of uh, all the plans that you have for the NSC for the rest of the year. Thank you so thank much, you very for, much sharing your thank you for having me. I've been talking to Haruna Jalu Waziri, Executive Director of Business Development at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We've been talking about the recently launched Alternative Securities Market, a good platform 
for small and medium enterprises or emerging businesses to access uh, cheap funds at the Nigerian or at the capital market.